and shake your booties for black girl nerds. Well, thank you so much for your time. I'm excited to talk to you about Motherland, Fort Salem. Uh, black girl nerds had a chance to talk to you back in more back in March before the show premiered. So yeah. now the show has been in full swing. What has been the fan reaction since it's gotten uh, had a chance to get going? Even more than we could have imagined. You know, um, when you're learning a new world and you're learning new characters, you know, there's that trepidation. Are they gonna like you? It's like you know when you have a new baby. Mm -hmm. And you're like wanting to present it to the world. And the first time somebody says, ooh, that baby has a cute dress on, you get mad. <laughs> um, <laughs> but everybody's been really receptive. Everybody's um, really bonding. They're finding the people that they gravitate to. You know, the relationship between Scylla and Rael, the sternness of Anacostia, the witchery that is all, all embedded in Lynn as uh, General Alder. So they're, they're really loving it and we're super elated about it. You know, the, the timeliness of this show landing um, outside of our current normal with the pandemic, but just in an era are, where women are really being uplifted more than ever. And it's very, very powerful to see a female dominated society, women leading the military, we, women leading the charge. We know that women lead the charge, but now we get to see it uh, displayed on the screen. What's that experience been like for you to have such a strong female voice and uh, participate in this series? It's been surreal. And when imagination gets to really come to life like that and show you what's possible, if we all just give it a chance, you know, um, I think it's really, as you said, reflective of the times. There couldn't have been a better time for this thing to come out. Elliot Lawrence started writing this over 10 years ago. Mm. So to be a visionary like that and to see the possibility and to really, really paint that picture and also not diminish anybody else while he's letting women roar. You know, men are taking on a different role. They may not have known what it was like to be single father. They may not have known what it was like to get the cat calls that we sometimes get, as we saw in Beltane. Right. You know, women are taking back their sexuality and seeing that even displayed in this show and using it as a, as a beautiful, powerful thing versus a dirty thing if a woman shows that she can be vulnerable in sexuality. You know, it's been really, really empowering just as, as a show, but even with being involved with Freeform, who's always been so very inclusive and kind of outside of the box with the norms. It's been a delightful ride and I hope everybody's really taking notes and applying it to real life. I love that. Yeah, Freeform has been leading the charge of diversity and interesting and creative shows. Very, very different from what we see on some of the other networks. Oh, with yeah. uh, with uh, Ford Salem, um, something that has also been very striking to me is just how visually it just looks so different from everything else with the orange wash and kind of that retro feel to kind of work in accompaniment with uh, witches and the long history in, in, in the world. How has uh, a project of this sort compared to some other projects just because it's so aesthetically different? It's very unique from anything else I've ever done. Everything has been, you know, very, very vivid and good in the space that it's in. But I think that the idea of going with, with a, a sepia wash or something that gives you more of an aged feel while presenting such a new idea really makes you have to just jump into it full on, you know? Um, as we were working and just kind of seeing what they were doing and behind the scenes and just the visuals coming together and the visionaries that came together to make it happen, you realized everybody was really all in with this process and making sure that the world looked as it was supposed to. It felt as it was supposed to. The colors needed to touch you. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they did that. When you finally had a chance to see like a full episode, how did, how did you receive it when you, after all those you know, months and months of work and work and work, and you finally got to see it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's been years, lady. It's been okay. two years. It's been two oh. years since the pilot. And I think that's what some, you know, people get to see the, the finished results and we're glad that they relish and they enjoy it. But the anticipation and the build, we filmed the pilot two years ago. Oh, wow. When we got picked up, we had to refilm the pilot. And then we got to continue with the rest of the story. So once it came out, I did a cross between a Holy Ghost dance and a complete fallout. My son was looking at me like, are you okay? Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, oh, yes, hallelujah. You know, so it was, it was, um, it was that, uh, mm. that, that's, that's the best way I can describe it. You finally get to put this thing out there. And, you know, when you can't really talk about it, when you're doing these interviews and you've got these other projects, I'm very grateful for it. This thing is so new and it's bubbling and so excited and you just really let that thing out. It was just um, cool. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. And it, feel, it feels amazing each time. 
I'm getting to watch this brand new with everybody because we didn't have the visual effects. We didn't have the color correction. I didn't know what was going to be on the editing floor. So it's, it's brand new for me too. So I have to ask you about our little characters here about Anna Kasia. What's up with her and Scylla? What's up? Yeah. What's, what's, what's up with those two? What's going on? Nobody. What can you tell? Well, we won't tell anybody, you know, except everybody who's watching this, but what can you <laughs> tell, you know, but they won't tell anybody else. What is up with those two? You ever met somebody? Here we go. You ever said, I'm not going to be like my mama when I grow up. Mm -hmm. But you're so similar in a different way. That is the connecting tie between Scylla and Anacostia. Mm -hmm. They have a likeness that makes them hate each other. They have mm -hmm. the ability to see the forbearings of other people. And that's why from the beginning, she looks at her and she's like, you know, you need to just kind of stay away. You're bad news. She's been there. She's done that. Anacostia has taught many a soldier. So she knows a bad seed when she sees it. But she hasn't really seen one so defiant. And because of the fact that she was actually a fosterling, she was an orphan, she understands what that is, but Scylla chose to use that situation in a way to make it a, a, a bad thing. She chose to use her power for evil. And Anacostia is really realizing that a bit early on. And as everything starts to play out this coming Wednesday, you'll see even more of the tea spill. Honey. It's a fool. Mm. It's a fool. You know, there's a, there was one scene, I think it was in episode one, where the, our three young uh our three young ladies are together and they're gathered around and they're doing their voice harmony to create this, uh, this weapon that they'll probably use in the future. Yes. As a singer, did you look at that like, hmm, maybe they should do it this way? No, one of the things that I love is the, the alternate history that we're creating where we're just completely flipping everything on its head. So why not shape the sound of music and use the music as magic and work? differently. Mm -hmm. The harmonies are very minor. Um, that was something that I really had to kind of get over and, and get into. And you know, the sounds weren't necessarily pretty on their own, but just like the magic, when they combine, the harmonies create this thing, there's something within you. So I thought it was a really cool way to kind of do magic and what we call it work. You mm -hmm. know, there's no shade to anybody else, but this was, was when I was reading the script, I realized this is not bippity boppity book. This is not sitting right. in front of a book. This is not traditional. Nothing about this is traditional. Mm -hmm. um, I'm one of my best friends is Kyla Pratt. Mm -hmm. And after the first show and she saw me do my, you know, thing, she called me, she was like, girl, me and my brother was in the kitchen, like, oh, you know, trying to figure out if we can make this thing happen too. And that's what we wanted to create. We want that, you know, that same interaction where you're like, if I make this song, this person's going to look over here. If I make this song, that's it, that's it. we want the magic to be tangible and we want you to try to do it with us. I mean, I tried to get a little me, 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 you know, I tried to get a I little know. bit of something that it didn't go too good. I mean, you know, <laughs> some things uh, started cracking in here, but not magically. You they know, just kind of started just had to keep it figure out how to do it. You know, you just in your process for the work. I know. I just got to, <clears throat> you know, get my little tea and lemon, get it warmed up a little bit and then maybe oh, it'll honey. be good. Yeah, you'll be straight. So um, I must ask you, during this quarantine time, you, it has affected everyone differently. We, a lot of people are driven, well, everyone has driv is driven indoors and had time to bond with family and connect. What has this time been like for you? Sometimes they say when we are driven into isolation and inspire some of our, our great art or we turn within and look within, what has this time been like for you? And has it uh, inspired new music or anything like that for you? There's been a whole lot of introspection. Mm -hmm. um, when you're stripped down to <laughs> no wigs, when you're stripped down to at home, when you're stripped down to not being able to avoid or get out of something that may have been uncomfortable that you didn't want to front, whether it's a hospital memories or just yourself in the mirror, um, you get a real chance to kind of look and see who you have been, who you are, and who you want to be. And I think that's a healthy journey for me to be on right now, because as I'm playing all these different characters, I'm learning a lot, but how do each of these people that I've played affect me? Um, I always think you kind of take some of them with you. Janine, you know, I've never had that habit, hallelujah, but now I have an empathy and I have an understanding of choice. Mm -hmm. um, with uh, Carissa in A House Divided, I got to tap into my deep, dark side. You know, I'm conniving, I'm mischievous, I'm wreaking havoc. Is that really, how do I make sure that I don't go that route or something happens, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing is really taking a look at my relationship with my son. 
um, he is the reason I am the woman I am today. And a couple of years ago, it looked like something different. And these last few years, I had been so busy. Thank God, just working as a single mom, that struggle is real, even for me. Amen. But then when I had a chance to really sit and just look at the man that he's become, like he just turned 21. He's over here like, hey, you want to be a lot And I'm like, to me, you better stop playing with these people, 21. I'm so serious. I'm so serious. It's just like you get a chance to really sit and look at the person that I did not make him, per se. But the collaborative effort of who he's turned into, because it was partially mom, it was partially him, it was partially life, and just really growing and loving the person that he is. Um, I baked for the first time yesterday. What'd you make? What'd you make us? Some bull. Um, <laughs> I was trying to make some flat bread. Cornbread is my downfall. Jiff, right. you get me every time. So I was like, I want some bread, but I don't want them hips. So we're gonna try to make some flaxseed bread. Flaxseed tends to go gelatinous. So I made something that looked a little bit like a jellyfish. We won't get into it. Um, but today is a new day to try again. That's okay. Um, I started doing gardening, you know, just really, really getting down to those primal things that I wish I had had time to do. And I'm taking advantage of it that way. I, that's wonderful. I, you know, I've had some, a few little cooking fails in here. And I just had to sit down and go, I hate it here. I'm tired of eating my own food. And I can cook, but I'm really tired of my own food. Nah, truth be told, I got my house built. And if it wasn't for the fact that by code law, you have to have a kitchen, I'd have been like, eh. What's that for? For what? <laughs> you know, I was just not that girl. But I'm really starting to find joy in it, fun in it, you know? Oh, that's wonderful. So lastly, we are all going to be binge watching Motherland Fort Salem. So yeah. when you're not watching that, what are maybe two or three things you've watched recently that you thought were real cool that really, really got you? Listen, I watched all of Altered Carbon. I don't know Ooh. how I fell behind the curve on that one. Whoo, if y'all watching, I won't do that too. Okay, um, period. <laughs> I also went back and just watched some of the oldies that led into the, goodie, the goodies. I watched all of Star Wars from beginning to end in what's called the Machete Order. Ooh. That was really cool because even with the filming and the technology being vastly different as the decades went, the story was so powerful that you didn't really fall out of it in any way mm -hmm. form, which was a really big lesson for me. Um, hey, I just started watching Tiger Kings. Yeah. Yeah. What? what? What episode are you on? I'm on, I'm on the first one. I literally oh, started yesterday. All honey. because of the, the Megan the Stallion challenge and he, he over here, bah, bah, bah. I was like, now wait a minute. <laughs> It, it, it's, it's, it's something else. It's, I haven't even gotten all the way. I'm up to episode three. So I feel like I need to get back into it, but I've been a little consumed with a whole bunch of, I've been watching your show. And so hey. I have to get back to that. But yeah, it's, it's a mess. It's a mess, ma'am. It's, it's a whole mess. <laughs> well, Demetria, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I love your performance. I love our matching hair here. Thank and you. I wish you all the best, best things. Thank you, and the same to you. And if you don't mind, I would like to say a special thank you to all the nurses, doctors, food providers, those still making the deliveries to people who can't get out, the grocery stores, everybody who's really just taking the time to make sure that we're able to survive this pandemic and risking yourselves. Thank you for your service. We appreciate you. Stay safe. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful day. God bless you, sis. And we'll talk again soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Gonna shake your booties for black girl nerds.